Okay, so let's talk about a new feature that was introduced in Unreal 5.0. You know, I say introduced, but it was more of sneaked in in 5.0 uh, because there was no news about it. There was nothing on the changelog. And I think it's pretty amazing. And that's why I think it's worth making a video and kind of share it with you. So let's talk about a scenario, right? So let's say you have an open world game or you have a map that is quite large and you have all these raw resources that are scattered around the map, right? They can be crafting materials. They can be, you know, materials that can be mined uh, or trees that can be broken down and be collected. Uh, but you don't want to kind of have a blueprint per raw material, right? Or per tree or per crafting material around the world, because of course that would be expensive. And a way we used to do that, or a way we kind of can do that is to use a static or instance, or a call instance, a static mesh, right? It's, it's quite easy. You know, you would just create an actor. You would add the component, a hurry call instance, a static mesh. You would tell it what mesh you want to render in. And you would just tell it, hey, I want like hundreds instances here, here at this location. And it would be cheaper than placing individual kind of meshes in your world. But there was a problem, right? I, or I would say there's a problem with that. Um, it's that all these instances are part of the same actor, part of the same blueprints. So, for example, if I wanted to interact with this chair, I'm interacting with the blueprint that is shared you know, among all the chairs here. Um, so, you know, you know, you can already see the problem. Let's say if you wanted to have individual health on this chair, right? A health value on this chair. That's not quite easy to do, right? Or, or I would say at least there's not a clean way of doing it. And that's where this new feature comes in place. It's called lightweight instances, right? Uh, it's a subsystem uh, that was introduced in 5.0. And before we get started, I would uh, kind of ask you to go to plugin window, search for lightweight, and you can see it here. It's this plugin, lightweight instances editor. Just enable that. It's an editor plugin. Um, then you can restart, and once you are restarted, you are set. So uh, now let's actually talk about you know, like what it does, right? Um, lightweight instances are a way of representing an actor, right? Um, in a light mode, kind of a light version of it, right? Um, it's a way of saying that, hey, we don't really need all this information. We just need to know where it is and kind of like what class it is or, you know, how it looks like. And then that's all. And, you know, you know, we wanted to do that in a cheap way. So I have done an example here, right? So I have three chairs here. I could have used the same method, but again, we would have the problem that they are part of the same blueprint. But if you can see here, I can click them individually. And if you have noticed it, right, if you have noticed it, that this kind of panel looks different um, compared to a blueprint actor panel here. It just has transform. And basically we just actually, I mean, basically we just need a transform. Uh, we don't need its, um, anything else there, right? This is all we need to know about it. Um, so in order to do that, we need to create a blueprint class. And I was quite surprised to see, um, you know, the, the new system is actually already exposed to blueprint. So you could create a new blueprint class, call it um, lightweight here. So you have the lightweight instance manager here. Um, you can just ignore this um, because that's the one that I've created. So you have the lightweight instance manager. This is the base class for all the managers, right? Um, it accepts actor classes, um, you know, any actor class that you want, and it can represent it anywhere. And uh, then we have the lightweight instance aesthetic mesh manager. The difference here is that you can actually show that in the world, right? You can use aesthetic mesh to kind of like display that to the player that here at this location, this chair exists. So, you know, you create that, and I've already created here. Um, we open the blueprint. It's pretty, uh, you know, simple blueprint here. It has a component, a native component, a hurry called instanced static mesh component. And the most important setting here is this represented class. We are telling this blueprint or this manager that 
you should manage all the lightweight instances of this class, right? And this is our blueprint, which is just an app blueprint that has a static mesh here, right? Now, the second thing that you want to configure is to go to the component here and tell it how you want to display it, right? Uh, you know, you would just give the mesh here, the SM chair, and that's how we represent it. And that's all you have to do. Then you would just place it in the world, right? I've already placed it here. Lightweight uh, manager here, and it just exists there. And if you have, if you have noticed here, you have three material, here, sorry, three elements here. And these are basically represent these three chairs here. Um, now let's add a new kind of instance. Um, so you would just place your actor, you know, normally, just a blueprint actor here. You would select them, right? Then go up here under the actor menu. And since we have enabled the plugin, we now have a new option here. Click it, and that's all you have to do. Now, if you click them, you can see they have already been converted to the lightweight instances. And if you go back to the manager, you can see now we have five, which are these extra two. Now, the amazing thing about this is that it, this has been already implemented in the engine, right? Um, uh, for example, if you are using a trace function, you don't have to change anything. And if you point at them, you can see they are already being detected. They are being, already being hit here, right? You don't have to change anything. You don't have to write a custom logic to kind of do the collision there, which I think is one of the best part of this system. Now, how can we actually extend it? How can we use this, right? The system comes with two functions that are kind of like the primary functions. One is converting an actor to the lightweight instance. And that's what we just did, right? We convert them to a lightweight instance and it has a second method, which is converting the lightweight instance, these ones, back to the actor class, back to its class, right? And that can be done runtime. And you might say, you know, why is that useful? So let's say we have hundreds of these all around the map. And these are just basically a transform. And then their meshes are instance. So, you know, that's quite cheap. And then let's say we want to interact with this specific chair, right? We want to sit there or we want to break it down. We want to collect it. So, um, and this is where it's important to kind of look into um, the blueprint of the player character, right? I am just doing the trace, a trace from the eye of the character, and I'm getting the hit actor. I'm just displaying its name. Now, this hit actor can be a lightweight instance or it can be just a character, right? And this is the, the really interesting part is the moment that you access a lightweight instance, for example, if you cast to them, if you get their display name, if you run a function on them, they are automatically converted to a to the actual actor class or actual actual actor blueprint. And then, you know, you can get their display name, you can get their, you know, you can call a function on them. You don't have to actually run anything or run any custom logic to convert them back. Now, um, Let's try that, right? Uh, let's say the, the moment I hit one of those lightweight instances, I cast to its class, right? I cast to its class and I call a function on it called print information. And this print information is just a simple function on that actor that just displays a name and a health value, right? Um, I don't know why we need the health value on the chair, but that's just the, you know, the fastest thing that I can, could come up with. So now if we look at it, I can just look at the, uh, the chairs and, you know, I already called a function on them. I didn't have to do any custom logic uh, to kind of convert them back. Um, and now to kind of take that to the next level, I am setting the held value of one of the chairs. And that's why I'm using a do once to 50, right? So the first chair that we look at the health is going to be set to 50. So let's say, say this, right? Now, as you can see, the health is 50, 100, 100, again, 50. And this has already, you know, been done automatically behind the scene. Um, you could also try it here. If I go for BP, Confi, you can see it's not there. And then when we play, look at it, as you can see, 
are actually being spun in the moment we actually interact with them. Right, yeah. Now, another point about this is that we are only storing its transform on the lightweight instance of this actor. But again, you can extend this and add any custom information that you want. For example, a Boolean, is it broken? Is it accessible uh, or whatsoever? So you can actually use that data without actually spawning the actor itself. Um, so I think it's very important and it's really cool that you can do that. Um, I'm going to talk about another point, but this is more towards those who do C++. Um, I want to point out a few things and um, I want to, you know, especially talk about F hit result, right? And this is funny enough, this is the way actually I found out about the whole system, the whole subsystem. Now, F hit result structure is basically the output of a and a little the result of a trace, right? So when you trace, you hit something, you get this structure that contains like the time that it was hit, uh, the distance, the location, and the actor that you actually hit, right? So if you look at here, this is the structure, the actor that we actually hit. And then I was looking for the actor kind of variable and I could not find it. And instead I found this F actor instance handle. So this is the structure or this is the handle that takes care of the lightweight instances, right? Uh, so this structure either could point to an ID, the instance ID, which would represent that lightweight instance ID. Or for example, if it's converted to an actor, it would actually point directly to that live actor and then it would just give you that actor. Uh, so that's really important to kind of, kind of like um, note that. And then the second thing is, um, the lightweight instance manager itself, the class, right? Um, this class is meant to be overridden, as in there are a lot of virtual functions um, that you can overwrite. And it's really important because, uh, for example, let's say you have a, another scenario, right? You don't have a static mesh. You have something else, for example, particles or whatsoever. You could just overwrite this and then instead of accepting a mesh, you could just handle like a particle or something else. Uh, so you can actually override those and then just um, kind of, you know, change it to the way that you want to spawn actors. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's really cool. Uh, I think it's going to be quite helpful. I could already see a lot of, you know, use cases for it. And I think, you know, um, you know, it could save you a lot of performance.